Michael, some opening thoughts. Okay, I'm going to give you a list of uh, British politicians. Apologies if you're not familiar with the British political scene. Um, I want you to think of the British Prime Minister, the Foreign Secretary, the Home Secretary, the Mayor of London, the four chancellors before the current one, the leader of the Scottish National Party, and the leader of Scottish Labour. Can anyone tell me what they have in common? They all have ethnic minority background. Pardon? They all have an ethnic minority. So that's the standard answer. And indeed, it's true. But I want to suggest to you that that's the most tedious answer, that they're all descendants of migrants, that they're all people of colour. What they have in common is that they are all people who chose to go into politics with a view to transforming the world. They don't all agree, they sit in different parties, but that's what makes them interesting. <clears throat> Multiculturalism asks you to focus on what is the least interesting part about them, their color or their place of familial origin. Whereas actually the thing that defines them the thing that makes them a human being that is transformative, that goes beyond their origins, is the piece that we forget. They chose to go into politics. And I, I would say to you, that's not an accidental part of multicultural thinking. It's an essential part of multicultural thinking. You think of multiculturalism, and it tells you that there are certain protected characteristics that we must respect to do with color, race, religion, gender. Those are attributed characteristics. Whereas those that people choose for themselves in order to shape their lives and their destinies are the ones that we neglect as a consequence. So that's the first important point. The other thing about multiculturalism is that um, we're told that it's about Social groups nowadays are defined by their history and sense of identity, and that we should recognize that um, that forms an essential part of them, and um, indeed that we, are, that we should assert the, the differences between different groups. This kind, this kind of uh, multiculturalism really emerged in the, in, the, in the United Kingdom, primarily in the 1980s, uh, as a mechanism for um, e effectively controlling the relations between different uh, ethnic minority groups, and particularly between uh, those minority groups and the predominantly white population. In fact, I want to s skip to an example that you know, in the 1960s and 70s, what you'll find is that there are many urban centers in the United Kingdom that, yes, they experienced racism. And yes, racism was a, a, an act of division, but it also brought people together. The experience of racism meant that different communities came together politically to try and challenge the experience that they were confronting. And that experience wasn't primarily uh, a few thugs be beating people up. People's experience of racism is primarily experienced through immigration controls, allocation to housing. In other words, racism is propagated primarily by the elites of a country um, and then people imagine that it's uh, the acts of violence that are perpetrated by some of the least powerful people in that country. So th those are just a few kind of opening remarks. I think radicals like to celebrate the notion that the Enlightenment project of a kind of rational universalism has failed. And they like to view the idea that society has fragmented because they view it as undermining the grip and control uh, of the dominant elites. The problem with celebrating that fragmentation, celebrating difference, there are several problems, but the first, I think the most important problem, is that a focus on essential differences has always been central, not to radical anti-racism, 
but it's part of racial thinking in the first place, that people are fundamentally different. It's actually an idea taken from the racist lexicon and readapted into the contemporary world. To give you a kind of simple conceptual model, you can imagine that in the past there was a notion of racial hierarchies where maybe white men were at the top of a ladder that then went down through different groups uh, and there was a sense maybe that if you were joining the ladder at the bottom as a immigrant a member of an immigrant community maybe you could struggle and kind of work your way up the ladder a bit but of course you would never change your color all that the radicals have done is tip the ladder onto its side and say, no, there's no hierarchy, but we are still trapped within the rungs of the ladder. There are different groups and we must celebrate these different groups side by side. It prevents any notion of the possibility that human beings can transform themselves and transform their circumstances. It is the most profoundly anti-human way of looking at humanity. It means you are trapped now and for all time within the identity that is projected upon you until occasional moments when people break out of their identity silos and upset the dominant elites. To give you just a couple of examples of that, what do we do when Muslim women and of course, Muslims today are to be celebrated as one of those diverse groups that we must you know, absolutely not offend. What happens when Muslim women oppose the wearing of the veil? When they oppose, for instance, the installation of a statue in the United Kingdom in two weeks' time, celebrating the hijab, a god-awful looking statue, I have to say, it looks like Picasso was drunk. Um, but uh, called strength of the hijab, just at the moment when women in Iran are fighting with their lives to get rid of that, an, uh, a white artist in the U United Kingdom is installing a one-ton, five-meter-high celebration of wearing the hijab. Suddenly, women, Muslim women, are no longer high on the hierarchy. Their voices have to be shut up because they are a problem. What happens when black men prove that, you know, vote for Donald Trump. They're not conforming to the presumption of what these identities are. I know that um, you want me to shut up, so I'm just going to leave you with a very quick thing. I have <laughs> loads of multiculturalism. <laughs> My definition of multiculturalism is that it is state orchestrated actions based on a presumption of people as prejudiced to promote a caricature a narrow form of cultural difference, it purposefully and willfully divides society the better to control it. That is what multicultural. Thanks, Phil.